Regina Shelley Letare, Christus Resurrexit Sicut Dixit, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It is so good to be able to be here with you all today at this wonderful parish and sharing the celebration of the Eucharist with Father Stubbs, Deacon Michael, and everybody else here. These are strange times for us as a church community, but we are still here. We are still engaged at the ministry at hand. The church is ever present in word and sacrament, and your fellow churchmen from Wichita County bring a hearty greeting to you all. As far as I know, we are all still well. Our dear, now retired Bishop Eicher used to tell us, keep the main thing the main thing. These lections today are very much about the main thing. Ironically, the first reading from Acts and the Gospel from Luke are essentially two readings from the same book. The events depicted in the Gospel would be before the events in Acts, but it, but it gives a good point. It very much emphasized how it was in the early church, the way they recognized Christ. In the very first days, and later as it went on after the ascension of Christ, when the church was just young. An important time, thing to see here is at the time of the writing of the Luke Acts text, the Eucharistic celebration in the church community was already decades old. It's written backwards through the historical lens of being a Eucharistic community. It's easy to see the focus on the breaking of the bread. The two big things, the breaking of the bread and baptism, were the early, early marks of being in the church. From the very first, the disciples on the road to Emmaus, they're, they're, they're confused. They really don't understand what it was when Jesus was going to redeem Israel. The difficulty is their notion of to redeem is not the idea that God had in terms of redemption. Christ on the road calls them out. If you'd studied the prophets, you would understand. Christ's life and mission has nothing to do with running Roman legions out of Jerusalem. And it has everything to do with human sin. It had everything to do with the restoration of a broken covenant in the only way that preserved God's justice and mercy all at the same time. These texts from Luke clearly tell us that the early Christian community had come to the realization that Christ is absolutely to be found in the Old Testament. And given time to make the connections, they have a gestalt or an aha moment about these connections. In the words themselves, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted them all in the scriptures the things concerning himself. That's pretty clear. But Christ does not stop with mental understanding. Not at all. He takes that next step. Now he takes, blesses, breaks, and gives the four key components of the Eucharist. Wow, it's right there in the scripture. Their eyes were opened. They were able to recognize Christ, Christ and their hearts burned within them. What did they say to Simon Peter when they get together? They told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Luke is very consistent with what he's trying to tell us. As we move forward in history and get to the events in Acts, Peter gets it. The church gets it. Some of everybody else gets it. Who are we and what do we do? How about this? Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's a great first start, but where do we go from there? That all takes place in a day. There is more. Acts goes on to tell us. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, 
breaking of the bread and the prayers. Not just any prayers, the prayers. Likely to include the Psalms, but most likely to include the prayers of the Eucharist. The is a specific article referring to certain prayers. What do we do at this parish church every Sunday? Do we not read scripture, devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching, and celebrate the Eucharist, just like in the book of Acts? This is what the church has done since the beginning, since Acts. Any Christian throughout history could go almost anywhere in the world and see the celebration of the Eucharist from any given century, if they could today watch as we do this right here, they would know exactly what we were doing. The Holy Mass recreates exactly what we heard today in our scripture readings. We gather, we take, we bless, we break, we give. We devote ourselves to comprehending Christ in sacred scripture. We become immersed in the teaching of the apostles who succeeded him. We devote ourselves to the ancient prayers. We experience the support and fellowship from our community of faith. We share with others through outward ministry. What do we do here? What's Martha's Kitchen? Sharing with the community through feeding people that are hungry and doing right what we're doing right here today. And very most of all, I hope our hearts do burn within us. And in just the next few minutes, Christ will be present right here to us on this altar. The earliest of Christians came to know Christ in a very intimate and unique way via the Eucharist. The church has not stopped doing this and will not stop doing this. Not for some virus, not even if the gates of hell open against it. What we do at this altar is absolutely the main thing. And here at St. Paul's, it has been kept the main thing, much to the credit of your rector. It is the absolute beauty of the continuity of this historic church. It goes directly back to the apostles. Christus resurrects it, sicut dixit. Christ is risen as he said. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.